Angeline, learning the truth about Mom, widened her eyes and exclaimed, No savings and no house. So what? Um really left us nothing. That's crazy. I thought we'd inherit something. This is unbelievable. You're unbelievable. Money, money, money is all you care about. You don't appreciate our parents. Thinking of Mom's feelings, my heart ached. This shameless, foolish person? I'm Jamie. When I was ten and Angeline was seven, our parents got divorced. Dad was always busy with work, neglecting the family, and Mom got fed up. Since then, it's been just Mom and us kids. After the divorce, Mom took us back to her parents' house. She worked multiple part-time jobs to raise me and Angeline. Thanks to her, both Angeline and I grew up well. Act now, with our grandparents gone, it's just my mom and I living in the family home. Angeline lives nearby on her own. She's a hairstylist. She's a spender and always short on cash. She often eats dinner at our place to save on food expenses and asks mom for an allowance. Mom and I would say, we've suggested this many times. But Angeline never agrees. Instead, she rebels. Stop nagging me to come back home. Nice. And interfere in my life. Such things should be said by someone who's independent. You don't know her income went down, right? There's no pocket money for you. Ah, uh, I can't hear you. Both of you are adults. Stop fighting. Jamie, maybe let Angeline do as she pleases for a bit. See, the mom understands. But I won't give you any allowances. No, that's going to be a problem. I can't buy limited edition cosmetics then. Mama decided to give Angeline a monthly allowance of only $200, not a cent more. I think that's too indulgent, but when mom says it's what parents do, I can't argue much. I wish Angeline would become independent. One summer day, as usual. Angeline came to our house after work. I bought them. It's what's for dinner. Hey, Angeline. Jimmy's making hamburgers. Let's see waters. I don't like CS's hamburgers. Angeline laid down where the air conditioner hit the strongest. Angeline, if you're going to lie there, help mom. She's putting away the laundry. Tch, you're the worst. The worst to use. Reluctantly, Angeline got up and slowly started folding towels, muttering complaints under her breath. I can hear those complaints, you know. Mom, I'll get my allowance after I help, right? She got up willing to help, but only for the money. She should help silently if she's just here for dinner. Just as I was about to say this to Angeline, Mom spoke. I'm thinking to stop giving you allowances. What? Angeline's eyes widened in disbelief. I was surprised too. Had Mom finally decided to be strict? No way. I won't say I want money for helping, so don't be so cruel. I'll be in trouble without money from you. Action. No, you're basically asking for money. Shut up. Oh, sis. Mom watched her exchange with a gentle, narrowed gaze. Something indescribable in her expression made me tilt my head. Wait, what's happening? Some time ago, the city sent me a notification. A special health examination notification. I went to the hospital and a bad premonition washed over me. A chill ran down my spine. Unknowingly, I held my breath. Mom said, it seems to be progressive cancer. Cancer? Yes, it started with a blood test, then more exams. It turns out the cancer has metastasized to various parts of my body. The difficulty of full-time work wasn't due to age, but the illness... You say that. Um, as if it's someone else's problem. I turned off the stove and moved next to Mom. Mom held both mine and Angeline's hands. I'll try chemotherapy, but honestly, I don't think I have much time left. Jamie, when the time comes, I'll be a burden. I'm sorry, Angeline. I want him to start living without relying on me. The more money or meals to talk of when the time comes it's just despite still struggling to accept mom's illness being told such things left me at a loss contrary to my stunned silence angeline leaned towards mom demanding give me money while you're still alive what i was speechless at angeline's unexpected remark what is she saying if you're gonna die anyway you don't need money perfect give it to me i want cosmetics go to concerts, and someday open my own shop. I have plenty of things to spend on, unlike you. Spider mine. Angeline, what kind of person are you? It is unbelievable. How could she say such things after what mom said? I looked at mom. I thought she must be hurt. But mom was looking at Angeline with the same expression as before. So give me the startup capital for my shop now. You won't be able to help when I open my shop, right? So at least take care of the money for me. Great idea, right? Because I'm your mother. I'm best up giving you money. 
Don't say such annoying things, you. Angeline, stop it. Please apologize to mom. I don't care. It says you take care of mom. I absolutely hate taking care of sick people. Angeline shook off mom's hand and stormed out of the house. Damn it. Ben said idiot. That's... My scream echoed in the room. I've had countless fights with my sister, but I've never felt this angry. What is she thinking? I can't believe her. Is her a devil in human skin? Money, 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 money. Jimmy, calm down. Jimmy, calm down. Mom Helm held my hand, but my anger didn't subside. Two years passed. Mom's condition gradually worsened, spending most of her days asleep. When awake, she was either in pain or not fully conscious. She needed assistance even for small movements, and her meals were now special care food. Then so her. I felt our time of parting was imminent. For in these two years, I tried contacting Angeline several times. Initially, I tried not to think about Angeline due to the anger from that day, but I began to wonder if Angeline was also confused when we first heard about mom's cancer. Maybe she said things she didn't mean and couldn't take back. Maybe she's actually worried about mom. I hoped so. This feeling grew stronger and I visited Angeline's workplace just once. However, Angeline had quit without our knowledge and had moved away, her whereabouts unknown. Fortunately, I could still send WhatsApp and text messages, so I kept in touch. I even invited her to a trip we took when mom was healthier. I informed her about mom's worsening condition. I even sent messages saying I'd leave the house when Angeline visited to avoid discomfort, but I received no response. On a single reply from Angeline. Did she get a new number? Mom worried about Angeline too. She hoped to see her face at least once more before passing away. That winter, I took some paid time off to be with mom. Mom fought bravely, but at the young age of 62, she left this world. Angeline never showed up. I saw mom off alone. Though I was prepared, it was still heartbreaking and painful. I was now all alone. The relatives kindly spoke to me as I held back tears. Jimmy, it must have been tough saying goodbye to your mom. It must have been hard. Those words almost made me cry. Among the attendees was dad, whom we had separated from. I invited him at mom's request. He sat quietly at the back corner, not speaking to anyone. Was he planning to stay like that until the funeral started? He should have at least looked at mom. Waiting for the funeral to start with mixed feelings, a shrill scream suddenly filled the air. Mom. Oh, Angelie, it was my sister. I informed Angeline of mom's passing through text messages, chirpy pounce app, or voicemails. I don't know, but I was relieved she got the message. Good. No, Angeline can say her final goodbye to mom. Angeline rushed to mom's coffin and clung to it. Mom, why did you have to die? Epsis, why didn't you tell me anything? Wait, I was dumbfounded by Angeline Square. Then her immediate return to clinging to the coffin. What is she talking about? This is terrible, terrible, sis. You drove me out of the house, and now mom, planning to monopolize the house and the inheritance, you greedy person. This is terrible. Elvers, you drove me out of the house, and now mom, planning to monopolize the house and the inheritance, you greedy person. Angelia, what are you talking about? I never drove you out. I've been telling you to come back home. That good Steve and I. Mom. Cutting off my retort? Angeline began to cry loudly. Her relatives were whispering to each other. I heard murmurs. Bess drove me out. Tried not to let me see Mom off. I'm planning to open my own shop. I wanted Mom to come. But now this. This, you're planning to keep the house and inheritance to yourself? I'll never allow that. Angeline's face makeup was visibly smeared. But her eyes were not wet. Her loud sobbing was just an act. The ruined makeup must have been to feign tears. I have legal rights too. I won't let you have your way. I won't let you monopolize everything mom left. You must have been spending mom's money a whole long, right? I'll settle this in front of everyone. I understood. Angeline came for mom's inheritance. She's trying to make me the villain, win over the relatives and have her way. But what is she thinking? Ignoring our concerns and insisting on living alone? Disappearing on her own? Stir expect peace and relational epins. Never once visiting mom in the hospital, the anger exploded, and I yelled from the bottom of my heart. But don't joke around. You're no longer a stinker to, to me. That's harsh. Angeline covered her face with both hands in an exaggerated gesture. Relatives looked on worriedly as we argued. I was too angry to speak. Only Angeline's sniffling could be heard. 
Such a good act of fake crying. It's in the tense atmosphere. Dad finally spoke. Stop it, both of you. Dad, Sis is being terrible. Angeline rushed to Dad, clinging and portraying me as a vile person. Dad gently removed her hands and said quietly, Stop it, Angeline. What you're doing is disgraceful. But, Dad, you're siding with Sis. Don't tell me you're conspiring with Sis to take Mom's inheritance. There's no inheritance from Mom. <gasps> what do you mean? There's no inheritance. That can't be. Mom always gave me allowance, and there's the house. Dad calmed the agitated Angelin and pulled out his cell phone from his morning attire pocket. I have a message from Mom for both of you. Just watch carefully. Dad held up the phone so we could both see, upping the screen. I'm appeared. I asked Bronson to record this message. I'd asked him to show this to Jamie and if she's there to Angeline as well after the funeral. When did they do this? I had no idea, Dad, and Mom made this video together. I walked towards Dad, focusing on the screen. The video was undoubtedly Mom speaking, judging by her attire and frail appearance. It must have been filmed around fall this year. Dear Jamie, thank you for caring for me. I'm sorry for all the trouble and worry I caused. I feel guilty for taking so much. Dear Jamie, thank you for caring for me. I'm sorry for all the trouble and worry I caused. I feel guilty for taking so much of your young life. Thank you for caring for me without a complaint. I wish for your happiness. I couldn't take my eyes off mom on the screen. Her expression was the gentle smile I knew so well. The tears I had been holding back now flowed freely. Angeline, did you show up? I've been worried because I couldn't reach you. There are no savings left due to hospital bills and living expenses. Jamie is not your mother, so you mustn't pester her for money. Instead of shopping, eat well and stay healthy. Angeline's face twisted at mom's message. That's in this short message. Mom overturned the pitiful sister greedy sister narrative Angeline had set up. I won't ask you sisters to support each other. Just be happy on your own. Take care of your health and stay well. It was a video of less than two minutes. Fall is when mom couldn't do without painkillers. She must have struggled to make this video. Density, even in her pain, mom wished for her happiness and health. The gratitude and sorrow made my tears unstoppable. Vanzeline! I heard from mom that she and Jamie tried contacting you several times. Because you ignored all of it and never visited once. But then paid Jamie as the villain. I find it shameful. Chuda, you and I are strangers now. How many years have passed since you divorced mom? Don't come acting like a father now. Angeline seemed to have completely forgotten how she had clung to dad just moments ago. Her selfishness knew no bounds. All right, even if there's no money, there's the house. Let's sell it. It should be worth something. Angeline, it seems, had stopped pretending she came to mom's funeral for any reason other than money. Despite the cold stares from relatives, she boldly stated her intent. You're beyond shameless. It doesn't matter anymore. I pretended to be good for more money, but it was all for nothing. But inheritance is legally determined, right? That means I'll definitely get something. Thank you, Zoe. Fix the Carol. Does she not understand how despicable she sounds? Let's wake up. I felt nothing but hatred for Angeline's mocking laughter. All the thing, that's the thing, Ty. Bam, Zareen. Bam, sold the house. What? Mom said she didn't want to burden Jamie with money, so she sold the house for cash. There's still medical and living expenses, even if you can't work. What? Impossible. Mom never told me that. Indeed, Mom never worried me with money issues. But to think the house I thought was our family home had long been sold. What about the renting? Why didn't Mom tell me such an important thing? No savings and no house. So what? Mom really left us nothing. That's crazy. I thought we'd inherit something. This is unbelievable. You're unbelievable. Money, money, money is all you care about? You don't appreciate our parents? I can't believe mom wanted to see even a daughter like you. But I'm busy. I don't have time or money for taking care of a sick person. I'm trying to open my own beauty salon. Just remember? I found a great property, quit my job, and started preparing. My dream is about to come true. Isn't it amazing? I've worked hard for it. As in you plan to use mom's inheritance for your startup. No, I'm obviously going to get a loan from the bank. But they won't give me one now because I haven't been paying my credit card loans. That's even worse. Idiot. How do you plan to run a shop like that? Alan, 
Shut up, Bones. Once I finish paying off the loans, I'll get a loan. So I need money. I need 5k for the loan repayment, so just give me that much for now. That's astonishing. Does she not know what planning is? If owning a shop is her dream, shouldn't she have saved some startup funds herself? Struggling with credit card loan repayments, she surely hasn't saved anything. And she's already quit her job. So what on earth is she doing? Hey, give me the inheritance. I need mom's help. Mom, why did you die? Help me. Angeline screamed in near madness, shedding real tears this time, regardless of the onlookers. Our commotion had delayed the funeral a bit, but nobody complained. In fact, I felt overly cared for by the relatives. After the uproar, Angeline was exhausted. It seems she truly believed coming here would somehow fix everything. Realizing it wouldn't, she stared into space, devoid of energy to move. That's in her days. Angeline ended up being taken in by Dad after the funeral. Dad is now a fisherman in a small island of Hawaii. It's a peaceful place with no hospitals, no hairdressers, or reflecting on his past of neglecting his family for work. He moved there for a simpler life. He planned to make Angeline help with his work and pay off her loans herself. I had to handle the funeral aftermath and various procedures, so I couldn't see them off. We said our goodbyes at the church. While waiting for the taxi, Dad asked me, what will you do now? Jimmy, well, I have to sort out Mom's things and move out, because that house belongs to someone else now, right? I don't even know what happened with the rent. I need to figure it out. Oh, that. Don't need to worry. You can keep living there. That seemed impossible. I didn't want him to say something irresponsible. As a frown, Ed calmly revealed, I bought that house. What? The owner of that house for the past two years has been me. Seriously? Surprised. I saw Dad smile wryly. Two years ago, Mom contacted me to buy the house. Probably couldn't bring herself to ask her ex-husband for money outright. After some discussion, I bought it. I didn't own strangers buying it and potentially evicting her and you. Jamie, I was concerned about you two losing your home. The Daltonier. It was unexpected. The dad, who had little involvement with us since the divorce, cared this much. Feeling alone after mom's passing, dad's parental love touched me deeply. I wasn't alone. There were still people who cared for me. Oh, now, Halsey, you can live there as you like. Oh, boys, Bean is our church. Thanks for taking care of my dreamy ear person, Bezer, said the oldest. She must have been happy with a daughter who cares for her parent like that. Just then, the taxi arrived. Dad and Angeline got in and left. Dad waved at me. Angeline looked down. As the taxi drove off, I looked up at the sky. The winter sky was clear and bright. Somehow, I felt lighter. The message Mom left in Dad's concern seemed to reward me for the hardships of the past two years. I'll leave Angeline to Dad and focus on my happiness from now on. After all, that's what Mom wanted.